A lot of gurus out there love to sing the praises of intermittent fasting for weight and for health. But is that actually based on science? Today I am sharing actual scientific studies on how intermittent fasting affects your weight, body composition, and health. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, and by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. Today I'm talking about intermittent fasting because a lot of you have asked me about it, and because it's pretty amazing how little actual science gets talked about in the conversation about intermittent fasting. So as usual, I have to jump in there and get actual scientific studies to share, on this debate about whether or not intermittent fasting is actually useful. And I'm also going to give some reasons why what you're going to hear from this video is probably going to be different from what you've been hearing from the rest of the internet. And for a brief background, when people say intermittent fasting, they typically refer to time-restricted eating, which is when you eat in a smaller time window during the day than most people do. So a lot of people will eat during eight-hour windows and then fast for 16-hour windows, or make that eating window even smaller, like six hours or even four hours. And there are so many people, including doctors, who say that intermittent fasting is like the magic cure for being overweight or for being unhealthy in terms of high blood pressure or diabetes or all these different things. So naturally, I had to go all MythBuster on this one and actually go straight to the highest quality scientific studies out there. And specifically, today's study is from a top medical journal from researchers at UCSF. And it is one of the largest, if not the largest, study on intermittent fasting. It has 116 participants, and they did a 12-week randomized controlled trial of a 16-8 intermittent fasting protocol, which I'll explain more in a moment, versus a control group. Participants were randomly assigned to the intermittent fasting group versus the control group, and in the intermittent fasting group, they were told to have their usual diet and usual exercise, usual everything, except they were only allowed to eat between the hours of noon and 8 p.m., and the only thing they could have outside those hours was water and black tea and coffee with nothing added, so no cream or sugar. So this means that they were fasting for 16 hours a day and eating for 8 hours a day, which is one of the most popular intermittent fasting protocols out there. The control group, on the other hand, was told to eat three standard meals a day and they could snack as they wanted. So pretty much just be normal. <laughs> Don't intermittent fast. And the researchers measured participants' weight and did DEXA scans to get at body compositions, along with a bunch of lab tests over the course of these 12 weeks of doing either the intermittent fasting diet or the control standard three meals a day diet. So first, for weight, the intermittent fasting group lost weight, about 1% of their body weight on average. But the control group also lost weight, and it was also about 1% of their body weight on average. And importantly, there were no significant differences between these groups. So the simple act of being in this study and having researchers telling you to do something with your diet and having to weigh yourself and do these body scans and whatnot, unsurprisingly caused everyone to lose a little bit of weight on average, which is a known effect that is very expected, which I'll talk about more later because it becomes important later on. So both groups lost a little bit of weight over the course of these 12 weeks, but the intermittent fasting group did lose more in one way, and that was in terms of lean mass, aka muscle mass in this study. Specifically, the intermittent fasting group lost a pound and a half of muscle from their arms and legs and another pound of muscle from their torso. So overall, people in the intermittent fasting group, just from eating between the hours of noon and eight and changing nothing else about their diet or exercise or anything, lost two and a half pounds of muscle over the course of less than three months. Usually when you lose weight on the scale, about 20 to 30% of that is lean mass. But in the case of the intermittent fasting group here, 65% of the weight that they lost was lean mass, aka muscle mass. So that is two to three times as much muscle loss as usual from weight loss. To put this into context for you, an average height, healthy weight woman would have about 35 pounds of muscle total, and that goes down as you age. So according to this study, you could be looking at a potential loss of over 5% of your total muscle mass in under three months just from doing intermittent fasting. And other studies have found the same effect, so it's not just this one. Other studies have found loss of muscle mass and even the prevention of the gain of muscle mass. So intermittent fasting makes it harder to gain muscle. And another piece of support that people were actively burning muscle when they were doing intermittent fasting is the fact that people in the intermittent fasting group had higher levels of LDH or lactate dehydrogenase, which is a marker of muscle tissue injury. 
And in terms of other labs, there were no differences from intermittent fasting in terms of diabetes markers like fasting glucose, insulin resistance, and A1C, or any blood lipids, so cholesterol, triglycerides, things like that. Something interesting did happen in terms of blood pressure, though, where the control group, eating a standard three meals a day, actually lowered their systolic blood pressure. And interestingly, the intermittent fasting group lowered their diastolic blood pressure a little bit. But these were small effects, they weren't significantly different between groups, and typically, the blood pressure number you really want to lower is your systolic blood pressure. So in this experiment, it looks like the control group of eating normal meals might have actually given people an advantage in terms of blood pressure. So this study, along with the other ones that have found the same thing, shows us that not only is intermittent fasting not helpful for losing fat while preserving your muscle, but it is actually one of the best possible ways to burn off your muscle if you really want to get rid of it. But I imagine that most of you are not interested in losing muscle because it's important to have muscle for health, especially as you get older. You really want to hold on to as much muscle as you possibly can. And what these studies suggest is that not only is intermittent fasting not helpful for improving your health on all these other parameters like diabetes and blood lipids, but it's actually harmful in terms of preserving a good body composition. So the highest quality scientific evidence we have is pretty much the opposite of what most of the gurus and YouTube doctors and media are saying about intermittent fasting. So why is that? Well, first, you can't really make any money by not prescribing intermittent fasting. No one's going to pay you to tell them to eat three meals a day. So you always have to look for the commercialization factor first. And unfortunately, most of these people don't actually cite scientific studies or talk about studies. On rare occasion, people will say, oh, science says X, and then throw a bunch of unrelated studies in the caption, knowing that no one will actually go fact check, which is why I actually show the titles here and go over the studies one by one so you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. But even for the rare occasion where people actually do directly talk about scientific studies, pretty much all of the scientific evidence suggesting that intermittent fasting is good for all this stuff comes from studies that are very small and not controlled, aka they don't have a control group. And without a control group, you can't really say anything about whether a manipulation is working. Because as I mentioned earlier, the simple act of the researchers giving participants this diet suggestion and having them weigh themselves and doing these body scans seems to have caused them to lose weight, which is a very common thing that we know happens in these kinds of studies. When you actually look at studies that have control groups, aka randomized controlled trials, you'll find that pretty much all of them find no effects of intermittent fasting on weight. And this includes eight hour a day windows, just like the one I went over today, along with six hour a day eating windows, and even one meal a day, so OMAD eating styles, do not seem to help with weight loss or health really. The next question you might be asking is, well, why do so many people say that they were able to lose tons of weight and get really healthy thanks to intermittent fasting? And I think the reality is that people do not approach their own lives like scientists, which makes sense, we are not experiments, but in general, when someone decides to start intermittent fasting, it is part of a larger desire for a lifestyle change and is part of a big motivational push to lose weight. And almost certainly that is going to involve some diet changes and perhaps some exercise increases. But so often I see that someone will change like three or more things in their lives and then say, look, this one random thing I decided is the reason that I lost the weight, not the other things I did, just this one. And there is no way to say that without an actual experiment. Another possibility is the power of the placebo effect. So I do not at all doubt that if someone really, really believes intermittent fasting helps them, and the only thing they change is to start intermittent fasting, at least the only thing they consciously change is intermittent fasting, then I would bet they would lose weight. Because as you know, if you watch my channel, placebo effects are extremely powerful in our lives. For example, I recently shared a study on how just believing that you're exercising more actually causes weight loss. So if you're interested in that, check that out. And I have a whole playlist on how powerful the placebo effect is for our physiological processes. So if you strongly believe intermittent fasting is working for you and is the reason for your weight loss, then chances are it'll keep working for you if you keep believing in it. But if at all possible, it might be worth actually trying to convince yourself to believe that three meals a day will work for you because then that might start working for you and you're less likely to lose a bunch of muscle in the process. And for a caveat, if you naturally like waiting to eat until later in the day and just naturally enjoy having a smaller eating window because that's just how your circadian rhythm and appetite work, then by all means, you should do that. I personally think that the problems with intermittent fasting are probably largely restricted to the cases in which people are unnaturally imposing this 
time window on their eating schedule, but there aren't studies on this that I know of yet, so it is an open question. So I hope this video was useful or at least thought-provoking for you, and if you are someone who is begrudgingly doing intermittent fasting, then I strongly suggest you stop because there is no reason to do it, especially if you don't like it, because then you're doing something you don't enjoy and it's probably causing muscle loss. And as always, I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you do intermittent fasting? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's helped you? Do you think it might have some kind of downstream psychological effects on what you choose to eat that might actually be helpful? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please like and share it so other people can get this information and stop intermittent fasting if they don't enjoy it because it's probably not helping them. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell below to stay up to date on my videos. And if you benefit from my content here, then I would really appreciate your support either on GoFundMe, which is for one-time support, or on Patreon, which is where people subscribe monthly to get sneak peeks of video topics and get into some discussions and also get some bonus content on every video, like extra notes and research findings, as well as between videos too. So if you're interested in that, please check out the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.